What if the way we are thinking about interstellar travel is inefficient and unlikely to become a reality? The visions of giant colony ships seeding the stars replaced with a different idea. More alien, artificial, and much smaller. A journey to another star is no small feat. The closest star to us is Proxima Centauri at 4.25 light years away from the Sun. Despite the immense distances between the stars, we've already launched several interstellar probes. The Voyager probes, the Pioneer probes, and New Horizons. All these probes were made for flyby missions of planets within our own solar system that are destined to traverse the interstellar medium for hundreds of thousands of years. Interestingly enough, on top of the probes, the rockets that propelled them into their orbits are also destined for the interstellar medium. For example, when New Horizons passed Pluto, four months later, the third stage rocket, Star 48, that propelled New Horizons, also passed the orbit of Pluto, on course for a journey out of the solar system. However, these probes are not planned to fly by a star, and even if they did, their power would have run out long before. Also, what if humans? How are we planning to fly to the stars? The latest plan for the first interstellar probe is called Breakthrough Starshot, a tiny probe fitted with a 4x4 meter light sail. This would be accelerated to 20% the speed of light using ground-based lasers. The project is backed by several billionaires who have already launched 35 by 35 centimeter chips into orbit, called sprites. The plan behind the probe would be to travel to Proxima Centauri within a matter of decades, in comparison to the multi-thousand year journeys of the current planetary flyby probes. However, looking further into the future, how would we expect to build on top of this technology? Using the technology of Breakthrough Starshot to take humans to the stars might be a possibility. However, humans in a biological form would not be able to board the journey. A tiny computer chip fitted with enough defenses against interstellar dust could carry an entire crew or an entire planet worth of uploaded mines through interstellar space. Such a ship is not a new idea. The idea was explored in the science fiction book Accelerando by Charles Stross, where he details the journey of a transport system which is just the size of a soft drink can to a nearby brown dwarf. The advantages of creating a tiny can-sized ship are numerous. Such a tiny ship could be accelerated to a significant fraction of the speed of light very fast. It is lightweight, so that the energy needed for acceleration is significantly reduced, and the quote-unquote onboard occupants would not need to take along any supplies other than a power source. The other advantage of tiny interstellar ships is that mass production may be possible. In comparison to the traditional view of an interstellar colony ship, or even a ship with cryogenically frozen humans, is that the mass of the ship is enormously increased. Maintaining the lives of the onboard humans would be a priority, and incidents such as mutiny and sabotage would be a much more pressing issue on larger ships. Consider a scenario where we could see the nearby star systems where habitable planets have been found with ships like Breakthrough Starshot. Hundreds of these micro ships could be launched to each destination. Giant ships containing hundreds or thousands of biological humans makes no sense in this scenario, as the energy needed to transport thousands of these is much, much more. However, projects like Breakthrough Starshot are still in their infancy. We don't know if micro ships only a few centimeters in diameter can survive the harsh interstellar medium, even with protective shielding. I can also envision biological humans traveling to the stars, provided we don't go extinct first. However, it doesn't seem likely that the future will be populated with giant colony ships. It's more likely that most interstellar ships of the future will be the size of a Coke can, containing entire colonies within its memory. If you'd like to read up more on this topic, there's a great speculative piece by Charles Stross on why the future of interstellar travel is likely to be populated by these smaller microships, which I'll leave a link to below. So what kind of ships do you think will populate the interstellar medium? Leave a comment below with your thoughts, and thanks for watching.